like Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, uh, and how they're connected to the, you know, Joseph, uh, you know, Joseph is the foster father of Jesus and what have you? Yes. Well, interestingly enough, that um, the, one of the reasons we know that Garden Tree, the fake one, is not because archaeologists say it's 800 B.C., and we know that Jesus was buried in the newly hewn tomb, one that had just been dug out of the rock. And who dug that? Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man, one of the judges in Jerusalem. He was on the Sanhedrin, and he, because he had become a disciple, just like Nicodemus. By the way, those are two great stories of conversion we could spend a whole hour talking about. These two guys who risked everything thing to become dis disciples of Jesus and they came out of the closet so to speak after there they said let us have his body we're going to take it and bury it and so Joseph was the one that gave him the cave so if you look at it this way Jesse Jesus was born in a cave provided by a man named Joseph and he was buried in a cave provided by a man named Joseph I love those I kind love of things it. you know that the book and but Joseph of Arimathea, had, what they did is they dug a cave. It had a big antechamber, like a front room, and then it had these slots that they would, where they'd slide the body in, and then they would wrap, they'd wrap them up in all these linens and things, and put perfume on them, like Jesus, and with myrrh. In fact, when the when the wise men gave Jesus a baby a gift of myrrh, it was kind of a morbid thing to do because it's like giving a baby a coffin. Yeah. You know, myrrh is something that you use for burial, and to give a baby myrrh is kind of strange but they wrap them up in the body slide them into these uh, sections in the tomb and then they'd cover it over and uh, so you could still come into the open area and and see you know check on their bodies and so on and so this is what happened at the tomb of christ that that's where they buried him and he was there for three days but you know the bible says three days and three nights and, and some people say aha you're wrong because he went in there late on friday and he was already up by sunday that's not three days and three nights well that just shows the stupidity of some people who don't take the time to understand the culture you can't you've got to read the bible in its historical and linguistic uh, context and if you do that, you realize that the, the, for the Hebrews, when they say three days and three nights, they mean any part of three days and three nights. This is also going to be up on my blog in three days. I write an article about this. But it's meaning on the third day, three days, and Jesus was. He was in the tomb Friday afternoon, and he was back out on Sunday morning. That's the, the third day. He rose on the third day. It's exactly what the, it's called a Hebraism. It's like a figure of speech for Jews. And so Jesus was in the tomb, and he, while he was there, he went down into the underworld, to the, the world of the dead, called Hades, not hell of the damned, but hell of those who were waiting for the time of resurrection. Some of us look back at the crucifixion of Christ for our salvation. Others that were before him looked forward in faith to what he was going to do. His crucifixion and resurrection are the central point in history. Those saints from the Old Testament looked forward to it. We look backward to it, but it's that one big cross in the middle of all of history that we all look to and jesus went down and spoke to all of them and said what i did i now did it now i can take you all up to heaven with me so jesus went down into hell we say in the creed but it's really the place of the dead those who are waiting for their redemption they're waiting to be taken up to heaven and then on, mm -hmm. the, on sunday morning he's risen from the dead and the, the John and Peter go in and look, and they said, oh, my goodness, he's really not here. And then he begins to meet people. And I take them on our trips. I take them to all the places where Jesus met them. I got Mount Tabor and the Mount of Olives in the upper room and the Sea of Galilee, where he gave proofs for them for 40 days that he was alive. Wow. If I had more time, I'd ask you, why is it so hard for everyone to believe in the resurrection? Can you give me a one-minute answer for that? <laughs> because they've never seen anybody resurrected before. How many people do you see come back?